Welcome back, everyone, to this week's episode of Booking the Territory, the Unprofessional Wrestling Podcast, where today we turn the page to a new month. We're covering WCW Saturday Night on TBS from June the 1st, 1991. But before we get into wrestling, we go off script and talk about a bunch of other things. So if you're a new listener, sit back and enjoy the ride, and we hope you love our ridiculous outlaw mud show shenanigans. Let me welcome in Doc, because he's always on time, and uh, Hopper, who's late. Doc, how are you, man? Well, I was going to welcome us into the hottest oh, wrestling. He's on. Oh, shit. So well, go let ahead, me do going. this. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the hottest independent wrestling podcast of your lifetime. And also uh, to the to the best three man booth in the in the business. You got any problem well, this, with any of that? Nah, that, that's uh, perfect. Um, OK. As we conference in the uh, superstar. Yeah, well, you know, I mean. Man. You can keep Everybody. people waiting as long as he does. Hey, Harper, how's it going? Hey. What's up, man? You get the milk Nothing. where it needs to go? Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. boy. So, so um, how you doing? We tonight? just started we're, recording, Harper. Yeah, we're, we're on the air. We're, we're right. live, at, hey. locked and loaded. We're rocking and rolling. We'll be out on our cell if you need us. All the well, old white men business terms. Um, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> um, so, you know, we're recording this, it's going to come out, you know, early part of November, but last night was Hall- Halloween's. Yeah. yeah. So did, did you go trick or treating? No, I watched the howling. You watched the howling. Did you hand out candy? No, there's no kids coming around here. They know better. They know better. Okay. Wow. What did you move to? Sh- did you move to Chalmette? No. Oh, I watched the howling. And I was watching Silver Bullet, and oh, I paused it to fucking go fucking use the bathroom, right? And so it hits midnight, and I go to unpause it, and it says to rent or buy. I go to, I was like, what the fuck? I was just watching this. Apparently, it was free until midnight the night, since it was after Halloween, which is midnight. It was back to you got to rent and buy it off of fucking Amazon Prime. I was so fucking pissed. Mm. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I'll be right back to you in a minute on a different topic related to the season. Uh, Mike, your kids are a little bit older now. Did you have some trick or treats? Man, they they shocked us a couple days ago, and they're like, "Yeah, we want to go trick or treating," and we were like, "Okay." So the oldest he went with some friends, and um. You know, they went oh, and did God. their own thing because they're like, you know, grown. Not don't get me wrong. You know, they they put costumes on and they didn't. You know, they 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 were whatever pa- painted their face, whatever. Hold on, yeah. You say, oh God, Hopper. And then the uh, the younger one, uh, who was a teenager as well, uh, went with her friend. My 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 wife actually ended up uh, taking them. And honestly, man, let me tell you something. I, at first, I was like, man, y'all too old for this crap. But then I thought about it. I rather them doing that than some of the dumb shit I see teenagers do nowadays. So, and here's shit. the third part. Here's the third it's, part of it. It's not here's, just teenagers. Exactly. It's, it's adult women. Okay, hold on. My wife didn't want to go. Let me clear that up. She she went because she didn't want to let the you know two fourteen year olds go by themselves. But the, what I was gonna say is the best part about when you got teenagers that go, they go, they bring back a bunch of candy, and then you can raid their candy after. It's so like a scalp it kind of. It's kind of like a win win. Like you, you kind of out of my hair for it for the night. And, yeah. you know, it, it, it was not. Let me tell you, I used to say, if you're a teenager and you're that old, you don't need to be trick or treating. But as now at, I got two teenagers, I'm like, well, they could be doing a lot worse. So, um, whatever. Fuck, you know Go ahead what and I was enjoy doing, bro? Please. In fucking high school, I remember one time it was for Halloween. This was the only time ever that i went to one of those house parties that was like the ones for those 80s movies like 16 candles type shit with a bunch of kids all in a house and crazy shit happening and we go in a house bro and we go in the back and there's just cases and cases of fucking beer and, and my friend looks at me i look at him and we grabbed that fucking beer and we <laughs> went through the back door we put the and we went to the fucking back gate and jumped in a car and fucking left. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, think and believe, even though I'm not an attorney, that the uh, statute of limitations uh, has expired. And then he went to someone else's fucking house. And I remember telling this story to someone not too long, about a couple of years ago. They're like, that was y'all that stole all the beer? Mm. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, bro, you still fucking butthurt? I was, I was like 16, bro. What the fuck? Well, so that makes it acceptable, right? Because you were 16? Yeah. I mean, yeah, fuck, okay. dude. Kids will be kids, man. Yeah, man. Good yeah, kids. exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm glad my 17-year-old didn't go steal a few cases of beer last night. I, that you, you know, know of. It was great. It was like it, it was like one of those like super bad type fucking moments. Yeah. When they're in a fucking house. So and That's when his oh, love for the world I watched. started. I watched for the first time in years the fucking Garfield Halloween special. Wait, what? You remember the Garfield Halloween special? No, no. It, it's it, it's good. Did I mean, he? It was did he? Me. Did did he eat a spooky lasagna or something? What's up? No, I remember kind of scaring me uh, when I was a kid. I oh. think it won a uh, what do you call the fucking TV awards? The An Grammy? Academy Award, yeah, no, uh, uh, Academy Award or whatever for it. It was good shit. Well, I, the other it's thing on, I want to check in it's on, on YouTube. I, I've never it. seen that. That I remember. Yeah, yeah, dude, it, it's it's fucking good. We need to okay. find out how your stash of Halloween cereals is going. Oh, oh Jesus yeah, Christ, yeah, bro, these motherfuckers just didn't know. I got. <laughs> I got a box of fucking uh, <laughs> blueberry for a fucking dollar, and a, and a box of fucking Frankenberry for a dollar, and I got a box of fruit brute for a dollar. They they didn't see you coming, huh? You just you just clean their clock. Coming. Fruit. I'm like fruit brute. This sounds like me during Decadence Festival. You get it? Wow. Like, I do. I don't know if anyone else uh, uh, will get it. Um, I, mean, I, was uh, in a store. I was in a store. Uh, apparently, it, it, I mean, they all got Halloween cereal now. Like, all the brands had their own. They had the Fruity Pebbles run, uh, uh, one, and they put that shit on the clearance rack. And I was just like, Frump, you're going too, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and I got that for a fucking dollar. The fucking Fruity Pebbles. Uh, Halloween cereal. I was like, but y'all just don't know, bro. Y'all know who the fuck y'all fucking with. That's okay. Never, we... never, never wanted to pass up the finer things in life. For the much box of cereal costs now? No. Yes, yes, we have kids. Yes, we it's know. Like, it's like seven fucking dollars. Six, seven dollars for like a box of fucking, you know, Fruit Loops of fucking Lucky Charms. That's too much. Yes. And I got hey, hey Mike, does our patronage box. cost that much? No. No. no that, that's, it, it, it's the only thing that inflation hasn't hit. That's true. <sighs> you see? Yeah. You should use that excuse. You should blame the fucking gas prices. Because you got to <laughs> drive all the way to the modem and to the <laughs> computer to make this work. Oh, boy. Jesus so, Christ. So, um... Also topical to the calendar. Um, I don't know. I think y'all are going to agree with me on what I'm about to say next. All Saints today? No. Uh, there are some Michigan State players that are about that need to go to jail. Oh, bro. I just, dude, before I clicked on this, I just got done watching that on fucking YouTube. Yeah. Mike, would you like to explain what you allegedly saw? to the people that may not know what we're talking about. Well, after the game, when they played Saturday night, whatever, the 29th or whatever it was, I don't even remember now. Um, From the one clip I saw, there was a Michigan player who, they go down the same tunnel. Uh, Bad the idea. Stadium. They need a heel and a baby face tunnel. For okay. real. You, you do, but come on. And... Michigan, you know, they laid a whooping to him. 
So uh, I don't, you know, the one thing is you don't see footage of how it actually started this uh, scrum and jumping. But from what I saw, it appeared to be several Michigan State players, and I, I don't know by them by name, attacked uh, definitely one Michigan Wolverine player, uh, jumped on him pretty good. And um, you know, my only comment to that is, bro, I mean, like, dude, take your ass whipping like a man on field. Get him next year. And uh, I, I think it's pretty pathetic because, boy, there's going to be some dudes whose heads roll, scholarships taken. Mm-hmm. I'll be surprised if an arrest or two doesn't happen. I mean, that's some foul stuff. Uh, somebody, was it you, Doc, that said, did you text me or did I see this on Twitter? Somebody said they need to get the SMU death penalty. That was me. <laughs> that was you, okay. Yeah, they need to get the Lance. They need to get the Lance, right? Oh no! Ah, well, uh, this is what our Michigan State. Uh, they, they, you know. they all. We go up there and we spank all their bare bottoms with wrestling brochures. <laughs> it would be uh, great to see that guy get up and he puts the claw on one of the Michigan State players <laughs> through the face mask. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris, the, Chris the Adams, angle I saw, there was a Michigan State policeman standing right there behind it yes. all, just doing fuck all. Oh, I didn't see all that. I don't see what what I saw was from like a Michigan, uh, like the local news from like Michigan. I didn't. So I wasn't sure if he was a uh, a state police officer, like Michigan State, not like not like actually the school, but like a Michigan uh, state trooper. I wasn't yeah. sure if he was that That's or just like, like or just some like random security dude. Because I mean, Bruh. you see, what do you think he is? Atlas Security. I'm just saying yeah, dude, I've seen armed security. I'm not. I'm. I'm not disagreeing. Like and here's I just said, the other thing. Something's he was either a state here. police or or he was campus police. Right. Something's okay. Going, something's going on here because this story should be much bigger, making the rounds in the news than it is. And it ain't. And it ain't. It's been quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Cause Cause that, which is weird. Shit out that guy. It was like something you'll see in prison. <laughs> That's what it looked like. Yeah. I mean, you were, you couldn't even tell what they what they were doing. What well, the angle I saw, you couldn't even tell at first because they were so on top of them. They were and then you kind of see like them scurry off. The ring and the boys were all jumping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was wild, well, dude. Hey, we had a, we had a wonderful weekend last weekend. Um, all of our football teams won. That's true. Say spot twenty four nothing, and uh, LSU was tenth in the college playoffs. Uh, top twenty five. Believe that shit. Buck, really? are they the tenth best team in the country? No, I was surprised uh, to see that. It's... I just saw it like like twenty minutes ago. They just yeah. put it out. I don't. I'm not. I'm not with that. Oh <laughs> fuck! Uh, oh, what? What? Okay, I, I go back to Halloween movies. Uh-oh. I mean, <laughs> I made Tiffany watch Deadly Friend. What's Remember that? that movie? No. No. That's that movie, but uh, with the the, uh, the that clip she shared with the mom from the Goonies getting her head blown off by the basketball. I I saw that when you posted it, and yeah, I, I was like, "What is this Mickey Mouse bullshit?" And I've never oh. seen that movie. I've never it's, seen that movie. It's the worst fucking movie ever. I mean, it came out when when uh we were kids. It's bad, bro. You hear, you hear it's Lady bad. Hopper. You hear Doc in this video. You hear Lady Hopper in the background. <laughs> she's got a distinct voice. I can't, I can't imitate it, but she's got a distinct voice. And you, you hear her chuckle and laughing and go, "You made me watch this movie for that shit." It's that's it. That, that's the one, whole reason I watched it for that one scene. And he's in the back. He's he's next to her doing that Hopper laugh that I again that I can't imitate <laughs> that he does. <laughs> uh, that movie looks yeah, terrible. I don't know series. if I'd want to watch that. Uh, we will be. <laughs> you know Bruh, that's what happens when shit. people don't have kids. Yeah, they can watch movies and like do. I watched that stupid movie just for that scene. It was see. Bad. See, here's the reason I can't watch movies. See, I have children. And then, and I, Harper, I, I, please don't take this the wrong way, but I watch the wrestling that we're supposed to watch for this show, and then I don't have any time for movies. Well, they watch it, like, 
they got the little, little toys and everything. And are they really into it? Or are they just like it's just on? What? The wrestling. I think, I think he misunderstood you. I think he. I think the way Harper just took it was that you watch what we review with the kids. Oh no, that's it's, it's yeah. hard enough to watch it with them in the house. Oh. I watch yeah. it on either my phone or a laptop, but by the time no, I do what that, by the time is, I do like, that, and I'm away from the family to record this, there's no time left for anything. No, it's like they watch Raw and SmackDown and everything. Uh, we watch uh some. We watch about twenty or thirty minutes of SmackDown. Uh, we're usually not in the house on Mondays and Wednesdays because of yeah. uh sports. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, yeah, there's just not a lot of time for all these things you call movies. <laughs> there's not Bro. a lot of di disposable free time. And I spend they it got, preparing and thinking about this show. They got this black chick singing the national anthem for the World Series. She is fine as f you're missing out, bro. Really? Let I'm pretty sure Harper forgot, in the background. He forgot for the uh, 328th week in a row to restart his computer. Yeah. Boy, she is fine. Who is they, it? I don't know who it is. Is it Aretha Franklin? Was... No. <laughs> Aretha Franklin. <laughs> so what do you think about there's no like, black American players? In a World Series for the first time since 1950, you saw that. We've shit? been trying to tell y'all for a long time on this show that that baseball is an insurrectionist sport, but nobody wants to listen. So he's trying to be funny, and and he just works somebody into a shoot, which I think is even more hilarious than than anything. Somebody out there is listening. What you trying to say, Doc? And just ignore him, whatever, or not ignore him. <laughs> this girl is beautiful. Oh my Who Lord. is it? She fine, bro. Man, I, I don't know like who she is. Girls. It starts with a C. C H Ciara? No, it started with a her name popped up. It was like C H O I E or something. Uh if for anybody wondering, we're talking about game three here because I know this won't air for uh, you know, about a week. So um, you know, uh the wife and I were talking about the the whole, you know, non black American players in the world series. She didn't really give two shits about the world series, but the problem is all of, well, at least where doc and I live in many places, you know, it's all select ball now. So in select yeah. ball ain't like going to the park when me and mm -hmm. Harper and doc were kids where, you know, you didn't get with, with park ball, you didn't get priced out of playing, um, you know, with good. And it people. ain't just baseball. It's all and ain't just baseball. Now. It's all sports. Yeah, I agree. So, with select ball, like when my kid was playing ball and I was coaching him, like, you know, I'd have the select coaches like, hey, man, you know, um, you should let him come play with us. And I'm like, well, I'm not spending three grand a year for him oh to travel God. around for him to travel around the state and maybe play and not play. I'm going to keep him in these park leagues where I know he's going to get playing time. And if he chooses to do something with this later on in life in high school then so be it but i'm just not force feeding that down his throat and i'm definitely not paying it bullshit, three grand dude. a year hey so, here's the, here's the thing so hold on let me finish let me finish let me finish i think the problem is that's why you don't see a lot of black american kid uh athletes now in baseball it's that's part of the problem that's you pricing people out of it oh yeah Bro, I mean, if I'm paying that much for the kid to play baseball, he better at least get a fucking a four year ride out of that shit. That's I what mean. everybody's thinking on the sideline as somebody who's I involved mean. with it. Like, let me tell you, there are there's a website or an app actually that has state rankings for ten year old soccer. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like my kid's team is ranked. Ridiculous. That's crazy. Like it's college ridiculous. football? Yes. Yeah. That's and they have an algorithm crazy. that's all getting fed by scores that get reported. And they've been as high as like 28th, 29th in the state of Texas. Oh, my God. Yeah, so, it's, it's ridiculous. So if you think about it like that, but then. Kids then, are like children. They're like little bitty. Th your kid's a little bitty thing, huh? He's 10. Yeah. Yeah, he's and, 10. He's not even fucking middle school age. No, but they 
um, like he's ran three miles with me three times this week just to stay in shape because some games got rained out. It's not what you think it is. And I'll tell you this, Mike and I will differ on this. If you have the means, if you have the money, you should put your kid in, in the, the YMCA, the, the city leagues, whatever, early on to see if they like sports. And if they like it, if they like it, key point, if they like it, then you need to get them to a, a club team as fast as possible. Yeah. It's like, let them go to Delgado first. If they get through Delgado, then they can go to. I'm not saying you should force them, make them cry, all this stuff. My kids both play club soccer out of because that's what they want to do. But I'm paying a lot of money, spending a lot of time, and that's the only way this thing's going to work. And Mike is on. I I laugh about black folks being not in the in the baseball, but that's exactly what it is. Because baseball is expensive from the point of you got to buy a bunch of equipment. See, like soccer, I just need a ball. Really, and then we got to buy uniforms and shit. Yeah, and fucking cleats. And you ready to roll? Let, let me let me tell you, Harper. When I was coaching baseball, I had a very ethnic team. Oh, they, yeah, you used to, you used to call them. <laughs> wait, I can't say that on the air. Oh, come I mean, on. I, I it was times where you know we pulled up to the you know the the field and we got looks <laughs> because you were because like because, uh, Keanu Reeves in that movie when he's the baseball coach for the little kids. <laughs> <laughs> we we pull up, you know, it was fifteen kids and you got three white ones and the rest are kids of color and yep. the other teams weren't pretty weren't like that and you know no, uh, no, no. yeah like we would get looks and and that's the so, you know fucking everyone's rims are stolen come on the fucking see, parking lot you see, see, see what you always think it's me Mike but it's him for for that's a guy that can't start up. his computer and it is he's he's Oh, he could start it. He just can't restart it. I'm sorry, yeah. he can't restart it. It's it's making all kind of weird. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's but, what, well, well, so what happened with those kids? They, they went can't to play, play football. In our- um, so they, you know, because their parents don't have money to put them in select teams, they end up, you know, going to middle school and they'll play there, and and then they'll end up some of them playing high school, and then they'll end up, you know, playing football. They they the type of kids like that I'll have is they'll, they'll play all three sports. They'll play football, baseball, basketball. So they'll be well-rounded. The thing is they're, they're not going to specialize in anything because their parents ain't paying two, three grand a year. Yeah. For, and here's for the club other thing, teams. Harper, even as early as 10, there are coaches. Now I'm not involved with this, but there are coaches that'll be like, you ain't playing any other. Sp- it's time to decide. Yep. Now Damn. our coach, our coach for the, for the boy is like, nah, nah I like that. They, he goes, I would prefer that soccer be the, the, the first choice. And if there's a tie, you come play the game with us. But as long as they're free and they're playing some other sport, that's f- great. Do it. Yeah, they want him to choose. And I, I I had one coach tell me that. He's like, well, he needs to make a choice. He's 10 years old. You want him to make a choice. Bro, get out of my face. I ain't that type of For parent. For real, dude. I'll tell him to go fuck him. He is 10. He's worrying about so, Spongebob and, and fucking no, Frankenstein hiding in a fucking closet. This ain't fucking LSU versus Alabama. It is. But it is. Kind of, it is. It kind of is. In those people's minds it is, but it, it's not. They think they're fucking coaching Alabama in a sugar bowl, but they're not. They think they are. They're like an indie wrestler that thinks they're at fucking WrestleMania. But if you don't so, dream, how's it ever going to come true? Oh, Jesus. So, um... <laughs> Um, hey, Doc, you think we should get Harper to restart? Because he's all... I don't know. You tell me. You're the one that's got to try to clean I sound this. like shit. You sound like uh, shit. Every now and then you'll fade out. You'll you'll fade out. When's, you wait, let me ask a question. It? When have you restarted it last? I don't... If the answer is not in the last two hours, then you need to go restart. All right. All right. I'm Hang up. Restart. restart. Doc and I got a five-star review. I got a patron shout-out or two. And uh, just text me as soon as you're back on, and I'll comfort you back in as, after we take care of this business. All right. All right. And now uh, we'll go to a message from our sponsors. Um, with that said, I want to give a shout out to a bunch of new patrons or returning patrons who might have fell on hard times. Hold on, hold Jerry on, hold on. B. He, he's not. He's hold on. He's gone. So what's his deal with the movies tonight? What do you mean, dude? He's got a movie for every situation. <laughs> 
He's got a lot more time on his hands than you and I this do. This motherfucker turned in. This motherfucker went off the last week and turned into Siskel and Ebert on our ass. No, he's always watching stuff like that. He's got, dude. He's got a job and a girl. You and I have jobs, wives, children. A it, podcast. It's a, it, it's a lot more complicated. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Just making sure right. it wasn't me. Okay, anyway. New no, patrons. No. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. New patrons, get it. <laughs> new Move. patrons are returning patrons who might have fell in hard times. Jerry B., Cody M., new annual patron. Brian C., Matt B., Jeff W., and Gary H., new annual patron. Thank you for uh, becoming a patron or returning to patron uh becoming a returning patron i guess is what i'm looking for uh and if you're not a patron you can become one at tinyurl.com slash patreon btt remember super brawl one is in the rearview mirror listen to us talk about the monkey doing the burger king thing and the bear pissing on the ramp also we got the next clash of the champions coming up within the next uh week and a half or so so uh we're gonna we're gonna try to see if hopper will join us for that one like he joined us for super brawl and maybe he'll even watch it instead of watching all these goddamn movies he's watching but anyway become a patron tinyurl.com slash patreon btt get access to the ecw shows with mike and jv the nwa power shows with the transformer sparks and little fella half pint which uh uh we're gonna talk about that in a second i guess doc him and his atlanta pick and go to hell and um Let's see what else is there. The world class shows. Uh, all these tales, of the, tales from the territories, are up as well on uh, Patreon as well. Doc and I have been reviewing. We've reviewed all of them so far. Which uh, what are we on episode four? I think uh, by now or five, five, depending on when this airs. So uh, we're gonna keep doing that and uh, keep putting those out there. So become a patron and you can get all uh, all that access to that great stuff. And I want to shout out David C, who is a uh, He's the BTT aviation expert. He is a legitimate. Dude, that guy's proven himself to be an MVP of BTT. He has. He is a uh, commercial airline pilot, and he has given us some great, great perspective on some of the stories told about these uh, escapades happening in the air with these gentlemen wrestlers. So uh, let's David's... just say that half the <laughs> more than half the stuff that you hear on these shows when they're up in their planes flying each other around, which never sounds like a good idea um it's probably not it's probably embellished to some degree now i gotta ask you Mike, yeah how many wrestlers have you ever met that you would allow to be the pilot while you flew uh hey. that would be zero and he's back so what i miss the uh, disrespect for classy and yeah it's oh, like oh I'm glad you part. reminded me of that because I didn't do that part. Shout it's out to this podcast, but just a little classy. Right now, <laughs> <laughs> disrespectfully <laughs> classy. Marky Blassy, Mike Childry, Joe Ice, good old Justin. Thank you for your generous support on Patreon each and every month. And then one last thing is Harper's being funny. Uh, if you want a free month on Patreon because you either fell on hard times or you've been wanting to try it out forever and just run sure, well, there's over 300 episodes available plus all the video versions. You know, it, we're above a thousand at this point, to be honest with the videos. Again, email me, book in the territory at gmail.com. And if you don't want a free month and you want to sign up out of the goodness of your heart, tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. Um, okay, Doc, uh, five star reviews. Yeah, this is a good one. It proves that you don't always have to flip and dive. Uh, you don't always have to write a book. You can keep it real simple and it still gets read on the air and we'll still be appreciative here. Uh, it's just, it's called, B, the, the title is BTT and it's five stars. This comes to us from Roger Rutherford, who says, the best classic wrestling podcast out there and no ads. Book it. Bitch. Um, he didn't Roger, say that, you said that. Roger, I know that name from either Twitter or Facebook. He has been listening to this show for a very long time. Oh, Guess who um, uh, me and Tiff uh, are, are going to go see, Doc? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, Bullet Boys. Judas fucking Priest, bro. Oh, 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 oh. she's going to go be your the, turbo lover. Yeah. I need to go on and get the fucking tickets. They're going to be in Baton Rouge at that River City complex that's now called the Raising Cane Center or some shit. Get you some chicken wings while you're there. Now, it'd be really nice if they did Painkiller from start to finish. Oh, my God, dude. I love that album. That's a good one. And then Rob Alford just decided, gave. Wait, wait, what? Who did we give? Uh, y'all just gave Chris Zoncha a hard on oh, talking about yeah. Judas Priest. Oh yeah, me and Zoncha, we go back and forth about Priest. I, I yeah, I know he. I mean, 
that, that guy's got the greatest job in the world. He gets like six vacations, a, uh, six weeks off a year, and man, yeah. he's um he's living the dream, brother. It must be nice, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Must I wish be. I could look like Uncle Fester. Come on. <laughs> what? There's no reason for that. <laughs> Don't haven't you learned the first rule of entertainment? Don't punch down. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Zahuka. <laughs> Zoncha. Uh Zoncha. All right. Um that no, Roger's been uh, listening to us for a very long time. He's he's a long time listener. Well, maybe I I we've got to get to the show here, but you yeah, said something a minute ago that that must be addressed. Yeah. If the NFL season ended today, the Dallas Cowboys would be packing their bags and heading east to the dirty south to play the Atlanta Falcons. They would and be on a road? And somewhere way down low is a little man dancing around. I can't quite see him from up here. That is going to say he told us so. Well, but first I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think Atlanta makes the playoffs. He he picked them as a wild card for one, and it's I, I hate the way the NFL does it for division winners. It doesn't That's matter. Bullshit, bro. It, it should be it should be record. Right, right. Look, if you want to award somebody the division because they won their division, that's fine. If you want to send them to the playoffs, that's fine. There's no reason, and I'm saying this as my team is one of the teams in contention for this. So whether it's my team or not, I feel this way. You should not host a playoff game if your record is worse than the team you're playing. Yeah, like, I it's I just dumb. I disagree. It's dumb. And I'm and I'm a team that a, a team that's not going to win, probably not going to win their division. But I believe that the division play is a precursor to how you want to be set up for the playoffs. And so I believe, hey, we'll go on the road. I ain't got no problem with it. We can kick somebody's ass anywhere. Right, right. Yeah, uh huh. Sure. Hey, you're going to have to, if you're going to win the championship, you're going to have to win it on the road anyway. So you might as well start whenever. You better what start praying to sweet baby Jesus right now because bro, the way it's setting up, your little buddy up there in Philly, Mr. Allen, he's going to be in your ass. Mm. A, 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 I mean, it ain't looking good for your squad, bro. You're just mad because the Eagles once won a Super Bowl and you would have rather the earth just came to its end before that happened. Of course I am. But, but, <laughs> well, Earth, it's, you had a good run. <laughs> and good is, good is subjective in this case. Um, <laughs> No, I, I'm the person who on the episode said I picked on the picks that the Eagles would win this division and that we would be a wild card. Check the tape. I'm on record. That don't mean you want it to happen. Right. But, we're, we're dude, we're middle-aged married men with kids. When does anything happen that we want to have happen? Oh, come well, on. Well, that's true. I mean, we're it's the been almost 30 here. years since you've had a Super Bowl, so, yeah. We're the victims me. here. Right, okay. Uh, Smash the um, matriarchy. Do you have anything else before I get this video Dude, version we going? We talk this is a two. What the fuck is a two-hour show doing in the middle of baseball season? <laughs> Literally. So uh, we're talking WCW Saturday night on TBS from June the 1st, 1991. So we turned the page uh, to June, and it is the middle of baseball season. But guess what? They gave us a two-hour episode on this particular week. Uh, just That's like last bullshit. week. This show uh, says the guy who never had to watch it. Just like last week, this show was taped May 13th, 1991 in Fayetteville, North Carolina at the Cumberland County Civic Center. According to the history of WWE.com, the show opens. Yeah, buddy. I was waiting for that. The show opens. Let me pause it. That way Hopper can get his jollies off over there. The show opens with Paul E and Missy. Mm -hmm. They're arguing again. And Jim Ross is mad at them because they're acting like children and they Mm -hmm. need to grow up just like this show does. Pause yeah. it, and I'm going to mute it for like, like about five minutes. Pause it right now. Okay. I'm on mute to, so y'all don't have to hear this. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is uh, she wearing a bra? Uh, yes. It appears that way, sir. Yeah. And you can she's tell it's tremendous. the 90s, because look at that top like that she's got oh, over yeah. the bra. The colors. Yeah, it's like a white chick's eight ball jacket that's exactly what i was thinking yeah hard to argue 
Hard to argue is for sure. They're arguing, uh, Jr. if you just watch his facial expressions, he's like, Jesus Christ, they're wearing me down. Paul Lee's got some lines in this thing too later on. But uh, for now, Doc, anything else from the opening? Missy's looking ready for the clash. She got that wig on, man, because she, uh, she had that short hair just two weeks ago or whenever How's it was. that work? Oh, yeah, that's true, huh? Bro, I don't know, man. Miracle grow. Yeah, something like that. Uh, I, dude, I walked out uh, the house the other day. My wife's got short hair, and then I walk in the living room, and she's got braids. I'm like, when did that happen? I, I just didn't notice it, and evidently, mother-in-law put the braids in. And uh, you know, on a Saturday, I was sitting there watching football in the other room, and um, yeah, that's how it works, I guess, or Sunday, whatever day it was. <sighs> that's women, man. They they changed it, dude. I had had the same hairdo since 2008, ball head. Yeah, for real. I ain't changing it. That's how it is. Okay, first match. Mr. Hughes out there with Alexandra York. We haven't seen him wrestle uh, since he was the big cat, I believe. Oh, yeah, that's true. Huh? He's in there versus a gentleman by the name of Philip Parrish. And uh, Paul Lee tells Jim Ross that he is sick of Missy. And uh, JR then tells Paul Lee, well, you can leave if you don't like it, which was a great line the way he said it. And then Mr. Hughes beats this guy's ass and wins. But, uh, Doc, what do you have from this one? Just, uh, we said this before with Kyle and Smokey. Ooh. Um, mm. dressing, uh, wrestling in a dress shirt can't be fun. No. And his shirt never comes untucked. And his tie. And he's yeah. still got his sunglasses on. Bro, if that was me, that shirt would be drenched before I even got to the ring. If it was me, it would have got untucked while I came through the ropes. It he looks a whole lot better like this though than he did his big cat. Oh yeah, he's whole had a wonderful better. makeover. Uh, they, they did him a world of justice making him yeah. Mister Hughes instead of the big cat. Yeah, and it's not that he all of a sudden became like a you know much better wrestler. I mean, he wasn't bad. It's just it's just the gimmick. Like it goes to show you when you're packaged right. It's a whole lot better presentation, and you're believable. And then, hey. that's what I wanted to get to. Look at his drop kick he throws. This, I mean, this looks good, man. The big dude to throw his drop kick that he's about to throw. Boom. It's hard to tell because you've got two different screens up on us. No, I don't. No, no it's I'm going to close one. Okay, I had an extra one popped up. Um, sounds like a user error. Probably. I'll restart. I'll be back in an hour. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> Mr. Hughes wins, Doc. Any other thoughts? No, nah, he's looking good, man. He's the muscle in this thing. Every corporation needs a big black man ready to whoop somebody's ass, right? <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> uh, that's, what, uh, that's what Mike is. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Harper, did we ever find out what the girl's name was singing the uh, anthem? Oh, I don't know. What's her name? Josie. No. Whitney was, Houston. It was, uh... <laughs> you all Let's make go. me look this shit up. Yeah, uh, we want to know. I want to I wanna know it for later. Uh, uh, let's, let's move along. I'm we trying go to get to into the black girls. <sighs> Says the guy who told me one time, yeah, the sisters just don't do it for me. Okay. Why is that any worse <laughs> or better than, than the white girls not doing it for you? Okay. Um, I, I didn't say it was. I'm just okay. saying, you know. Seems like hey. a non-issue. Well, okay, this girl's know. only 24. Well, that yeah. means she's legal. Come on. No, I'm just saying, you know, we don't oh, want wow. to deal. You don't want to deal with that. Um. Well, I'm married, for one, and you're right. Like <laughs> Chloe? I think C-H-L-O-E. Bailey. Chloe Bailey, huh? That's your girl's oh, uh, name. I'll ask the yeah. wife what she knows about her. She was hot, though. Next matchup is Barry Windham versus Tim McGuire. During the match, Jim Ross talks about the next clash that's coming up on June 12th, where it's supposed to be Barry and Arn versus Eligante and Brian Pillman. Oh, God. The loser of that fall apparently has to leave WCW. Um, Hopper, while we're talking about this, Doc and I are going to record the next 
the next episode of this, which is June 8th on this coming Friday without you so that okay. you can do the clash with us a week from tonight on Tuesday. All right. Think you can get that watched in the next seven days? <laughs> yeah. All right. You just got to remind I, me. All right. I'll remind you every single day until then, then. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, the loser of that fall at the clash between uh, with Barry and on versus Eligante and Pillman will have to leave WCW. Doc, um, I'm trying to. I'm going to fast forward now to when the rat comes back out, the actual Chuck E. Cheese looking rat. But do you have anything before then? No, the rat's back, and we're going to find out who the rat is. We sure are. Uh, Harper, do you remember this rat from last week? Yeah, the, the fake Chuck E. Cheese rat. Yeah, for, for, if you're not a patron, become one. You'll see we're talking about a Chuck E. Cheese looking rat, not a rat's in the ring. Rat. Yeah, the Why's rat's in the ring apron? now. Is it an apron? So that the, oh, no, so the pepperonis it. don't fall. Uh oh, there he no. is. <laughs> the fucking the heads in the middle of the ring. So if you're watching with us, you saw what just happened. Barry Wyndham hits a superplex and gets the win. The rat gets in the ring and goes after Barry, and the rat takes his headgear off. And the rat that was stalking Barry Wyndham was Brian Pillman the whole time. For a whole so, week. Um, so, uh, of all people, <laughs> I wonder if he, if he puts that on while he's winking at kids. I don't know. Come on. <laughs> Where a kid can be a kid. Dude, can you imagine these wrestlers coming up with this idea? Hey, man, we're going to send a, a rat to the ring. Oh, uh, you mean like ring rat? Yeah. <laughs> like, can you imagine these wrestlers in the back? It's like, oh, you know what we're going to do? I'm just saying this had to be comedy, but in the back. If you could have seen the conversation being had about what they were going to do with this rat, I guarantee you it was a bunch of wrestlers. <laughs> yeah, that's. <sighs> uh, I mean, this shit's stupid, bro. Why? <laughs> because they were entertaining themselves. I mean, why just? I mean, why not just have him come out from the crowd and and, and attack him? You know, and fuck him over for you know a fuck finish, and he. I, I mean, actually, I think it was kind of funny. Like, cause you're you're if you're in the ring, you're like, what the f what the hell is this rat doing walking around the ring? And then the next week, the rat comes back. You're like, why is this rat out here? Here's the thing. If they're going to do it, fine, but you, you did it in a week. Well, they did it on the same night of that taping, but right. we saw it so, in two, different, two separate weeks. Yeah. 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 Okay. So any, any other thoughts about the rat there from either of you? I'm glad no, it's, it's just Yeah, it's, it's, it's stupid. I think Why? that's the end of the rat. I think that's the end of the rat too. I don't think they're gonna keep doing that. All right. I mean, well, maybe keep... if they had a sponsor with fucking Chuck E. Cheese or something, and they were they were getting money for it. Well, we know this organization, when it comes to sponsors, doesn't know what they're doing. I disagree with that. Yeah, I mean, they got galoot toys out. Feet. And next yeah. week, in next week's episode, I've got another timestamp where they've got some new uh, merchandise out. So I don't buy that. That's some that's some Bischoff shit. That oh, we we didn't know what we were doing. I they was have, referring to the Jim Hurd Kangaroos sponsorship when Hurd tried to make the wrestlers wrestle in kangaroos. They should. Yeah. Oh, no, they fuck, I don't see. I mean, you just be need stupid. to do what your boss says and shut up. You're getting paid, aren't you? Oh God! You did not just say that. Of all people, he is the. You know, they anti had. Uh, I'm the what? You are the anti person that thinks that. But go ahead, Harper. What were you about to say? There was supposed to be a second wave of those figures, the Galoob figures, and uh, one of them was a uh, a Scott Steiner figure with the fucking ruse on. Would you hear this? I at? mean, not uh, on on. I mean, uh, Rick Steiner. Yeah, they got a whole second uh, group that was supposed to be Sting. Y'all still there? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah we're listening. We're letting yeah, 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 you book the territory, no, There was bro. a second wave. Uh, it was, I think it was Sting and Luger with the robe. Maybe Flair with the robe. And it was supposed to be uh, Rick Steiner with the uh, with the ruse on. So I wonder if... um. So can you buy can you buy the originals on like well I'm sure you can. I wonder I wonder how much they are on you like eBay. You can, stuff. but what sucks is that recently 
I forgot who I was talking to about this, but they said that uh, recently those it used to be those 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 like WCW ones. Nobody wanted those, but they said recently they've been going up in fucking price. Hmm. Well, I guess things get older and they also get more rare too. I mean, that's part of it. Plus, yeah. plus, I mean, it's not like back in the day where you had to actually dig for things, man. You just post stuff online now. So if somebody wants mm, something bad enough, they're going to pay a premium. Yeah. yeah. Unless you're a patron. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Right. Oh, this is when I watched it. It was on YouTube. It was the unreleased WCW Galoob figures. Oh, God, they had a PM News one. I hate to ask, how dark was he? Come on. It's a white guy, and he's just white. That okay. doesn't matter. I was just curious. Well, how, if, like, you know. Yeah. All right, so uh, we keep moving after the rat situation where Pillman sneaks uh, Barry or gets Barry. We go to a Clash 15 report with Paul Lee. Paul Lee is going to talk about a number of things. Flair is going to wrestle Bobby Eaton in a two out of three falls match. We see a clip of Eaton defeating Arn for the TV title. Uh, we then see some clips of Bobby Eaton versus Flair from NWA main event. And JR, you know, basically sells the fact that Bobby almost beat Flair last year on the main event. And then Paul Lee throws to a clip of Sting versus Muda from Japan. We also see a clip of Muda from last year at center stage. And then Sting is going to take on Nikita at the upcoming clash. And uh, you can hear us discuss that again on Patreon, tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. Uh, so... Anything from the Clash report, Doc? It's coming up, and I'm ready. Knoxville, here. right? Uh, I believe so, yes. Knoxville, USA is what they oh, say. What's that? Jesus Christ. The Braves catalog. Yeah, go, uh, and if you're watching on the video version, send a self-addressed <laughs> stamp and envelope yeah. and $1 to Braves catalog, P.O. Box 4006, Atlanta, Georgia, 30302, and tell us what you get back, if any. I used to get uh, Chop Talk mailed to the house. What the hell was that? It was like the Braves uh, newsletter that would come out once a week. Really? I mean, this was, you know, a million years ago, yeah. Hmm. Next match is PN News versus, I think, Al Steele. News is out here dancing, and uh, actually, he continues to entertain me. He even has Gary Michael Capetta out there dancing, the ring announcer. It's Oh, look, the white guy can do it, too. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, the white guy can be just as far behind the beat as PN News is. PN News just looks like fucking scum, bro. (laughs) Come on. What does this dude do to you, Hoppers? He looks like so, a fucking Walmart scumbag, bro. Wow. He looks like he drives a 2008 Dodge Charger that's, that just reeks of weed. And there's like fucking McDonald's wrappers all in the, on the floorboard. <laughs> uh. He looks like the kind of motherfucker that throws his fast food trash out in the parking lot. Well, you just said he's got the wrappers on the floor. Which one is it? Both, bro, but bro, he just looks like fucking scum. <laughs> I'm just trying Nominate. to figure out what. I mean, he doesn't like. Look, the bar is really low here, and Why? I think of the stuff that. Oh, uh, maybe I didn't say. He like, looks I like th- he's from the parish, bro. <laughs> Don't even. Uh, now, now I could see that. He looks like he's from Saint Bernard. He looks like he's down, not Chalmette, but the deep in St. Bernard Parish. Like he Della looks Crow, like, huh? bruh, he looks like a dude from Shell Beach. The only thing he's missing is the white shrimp boots that we call Chalmette Nikes. Chalmette Reeboks. Reeboks. <laughs> he, he does look like he's from the parish a little. Um, during, on commentary, Paul Lee says, you know why my hands are in the air? Because I just That's don't a fucking care. Move, dude. You're doing a shoulder roll? He yeah, he's doing a he's doing a roll right. drill. Oh boy. Uh he's gonna win this move. thing. Belly to belly onto this dude, and then he goes to the top rope to hit the uh, broken record. Uh-huh. And uh music plays as he's hitting the broken record. Good for him. <laughs> oh, Bruce. Oh, I want you to I want you to go find a picture of somebody from Shelmet that looks like him and post it on social media. 
He just falls on him. He can't even jump. That's a lot of mass to get up in the air, Hopper. I don't care. He just looks like he's from... Yeah, now that I see him without the hat and the sunglasses, he he drives the fucking Silverado with the Salt Life sticker in the <laughs> back window, bro. With no AC? Yep, and all he's Single. missing is the fucking, uh, the fucking Saints fucking tattoo. <laughs> fucking national... He's missing the fucking Saints Super Bowl tattoo. That's all the fuck he's missing. God. This dude is pissing Hopper off. It's great. And this oh. shit, how's that a fucking move doing a shoulder roll over somebody? I don't know, but he hit that guy in the face pretty good on that first one. I ain't never seen that before. Here's the other I, thing. I they, build, they, they build him from Motown. Well, yeah, because he's dancing and rapping. Yeah. Uh... Why not from, like, the Bronx? Yeah. I mean, Motown, I don't know. Well, that's Detroit, right? Yeah. Yeah. I can't even that. When I think rap, origins of rap, I'm I'm probably going to head up. New York. Yeah. They don't know, but they're so behind. They're probably thinking, like, fucking, uh, the fucking Temptations or something. Smokey Robinson, that's all. Yeah. I'm surprised they don't call him fucking Fats Domino or something. Chubby Checker. Yeah, right. Chubby Checker or some old... uh, I mean, they already got fucking uh, Johnny B. Bad doing a little Richie. We about to get to that in a second. But first, after PN News, we need to go to the York Foundation. We got Terrence Taylor, Mr. Hughes, and Missy Hyatt, who's interviewing Alexander York. Missy Hyatt, and this is Miss Alexandra York and her York Foundation and their illustrious beauty. And I know you've been offering some contracts out there because you want to expand the York Foundation. So give me the scoop. Is it Dustin Rhodes? I mean, I know we're good friends and stuff. I mean, tell me, tell me. Missy, you know, Dustin Rhodes had a really, really bad attitude. I don't think there's a place for him in the York Foundation per se, but we do have plans for him somewhere down the road. Well, I mean, could it be Larry Zabisco? I mean, who let, could it? Let me stop you right there. Because right now, I want to introduce the man that I've offered a contract to, Mr. Ricky Morton. I've offered him a very, very lucrative contract. What do you think? Well, you know, I have got your contract here. I've read it. I understand it. I know there's a lot of money involved. I know that the benefits are pretty good, too. I will get back with you on this contract. I hope it's very soon. Thank you. This is a great scoop. I mean, what about you, Terry Taylor? What, how do you feel about Ricky Morton joining the York Foundation? I think it would be the greatest thing that Ricky Morton ever did, and it would be a great thing for the York Foundation, Missy, because he's a great wrestler. He'd fit right into our scheme because he's always been a thinking man's wrestler. He's not the biggest guy in the world. He's got the big heart, and all he needed was a little leadership and a little guidance. And I think Miss York with the computer, with Mr. Hughes getting rid of all the outside distractions, I think Ricky Morton's best move, because I made the move myself, is to join the York Foundation. I think, hopefully, he'll come around. Well, the big question is, will he sign or won't he? I guess we're just going to have to find out. Talk any thoughts on that promo right there? What are the odds that Ricky Morton could read a contract? Oh, God, he'll have to oh, come on. sound he it out. read. Seriously? Come okay, on. let's say that he cleared that hurdle, and I agree with you. What are the odds that Ricky Morton could understand it? I mean... He's not, he wasn't a, dude, I, I've been around Ricky Morton. He's not a dummy. You've been around him? Yeah. Oh, I, I think Ricky Morton's a smart guy. I just don't think he's in, down with, like, the legal profession. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were an attorney, too, so. Well, he's sitting out there saying he's read the contract and he understands it. And I just, I mean, Harper's the one that said he had to sound it out. Come on. On. Well, I mean, Hopper's always just trying to be funny, so, uh, you know, take that for Well, that's our job. So looks like your boy from Def Leppard, Duddy Doc, Joe Elliott. Who? Ricky Morton just now. That's three of my... Kind of. I mean, uh, that's yeah. not Ricky Morton. It's no. Syria when he's near. Four. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think he... He's a smart fella. Yeah. Hey, here's the thing. So we haven't decided if Morton is a heel yet, but even if he's not, if I'm Dustin Rhodes, I got heat with him, right? Yeah. Right. Because he left us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd he's like to see that kid. Let's tug stuff. on that thread. So. Stay tuned. Yeah.
when maybe you, maybe yeah. we'll, maybe we'll talk about it at the clash. Spoiler alert. All right, we keep the show moving and um we go to the next match. Johnny B. Bad versus a gentleman wrestler by the name of Kip A B. A Teddy Long introduces Johnny B. Bad. Teddy says it's time to bring out a real man, a beautiful man. All the fly girls gonna be glad and the fly guy's gonna be mad as Teddy has got his rap going. And then here comes Johnny B. Bad. This match lasts like five seconds and I really don't have much from it other than he knocks out Kip A B. I just want to play the uh, promo after it, but I guess I'll go to you, Doc. Uh, what do you think about uh, Johnny here? Well, they were in on commentary calling him flim, certainly flamboyant, which is toad word for gay. Hey. Which in 1991, let's make no mistake about it, yeah, that you were a you, heel. That's called dog whistling. I mean, right, like, right. I, I don't, I don't think there's any, I don't think there was anyone out there who didn't think that this is what they were doing with him. Yep. I mean, it's and we all thought he day. was black. And he's not. Gay. No. He's not? Really? He had me fooled. That's a brother to me. Look at him. He had me fooled till like a couple of years ago, bro. I ain't. I thought he was a black man. A lot of people fooled him. A lot. Of, he fooled a lot of people, and it actually came out on Twitter. I think was like one of the times when it was first discovered. <laughs> he said, "Nah, man, I'm." I just white guy that was tan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Is that your excuse, Mike? Wow. It's like when people find out Sergeant Slaughter wasn't really in the fucking Marine Corps. <laughs> oh man. Tell you, man, Johnny B. Bad's playing a part here, though, dude. This um, was this was not good, though. No, it was. He just knocks him out. There's nothing really to this talk is about. Fucking there. culture stealing. Will it's called culture it? appropriation. Yeah. And then somebody's going to say that I'm virtue signaling by saying those two words. It, it, I think it, it, you two are just the gay community well, and the African American uh, community. I can't believe I'm forced to watch this shit. Man, <laughs> Skype doesn't too. like what you're saying because it's you... messing with your audio while you're trying to <laughs> say stuff. I think this is hilarious because you two are over there just. <laughs> Kicking the marks that trying to get into the ring. Y'all are digging in for some heat. Like y'all really are trying to trigger folks. It's it's so the funny part is I can smell it and see it from ten miles away. And there's somebody out there listening who's like, Oh my god, I can't believe those two. Oh. We're literally just saying the next shit that comes to our head. <laughs> yeah. This <laughs> is ridiculous. He's oh, fucking Jesus. gay and black. We got two birds and one stone. That's what they're I, thinking. I mean, that's what Dusty was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> He's Dusty's like, I got a gay guy and I'm going to make him a gay black man. Oh, man. Nuclear heat. Yeah. Let me tell you something, baby. Just just say it like this when you go out there. Just just talk about how pretty you are, baby. Just, you know, say, I, say I'm so pretty... I should have been born a girl. I mean, I can hear Dusty saying this to him in the back. These promos with him are are worse than the matches. All right, well, let's go to uh, the promo after the match. You're in the ring, Teddy, Jim Ross, Johnny B. Bad. Around a lot of great athletes in your time. Very impressive individual. And what a dynamic left hand. What's the background of Johnny B. Bad? Well, let me say something about Johnny B. Bad. You finally found a man that's the most beautiful man in professional wrestling. You've got a man that has the fastest hands in professional wrestling. You've got a man that's got the fastest hands in boxing. Five times Golden Glove champion. The man that made Mike Tyson run out of his tennis shoes. And one other thing, home and play that baby. All right. Well, I hush, Daddy, I hush. Did you hear him tell me to hush? Yeah, I heard him tell you to hush, all right. Well, quite enough. Now, uh, what do you want to know now, Ross? I want everybody to get ready because a man fears for his life when he steps in the ring with Johnny B. Bad. And when that left hook goes upside your head, it makes no difference. He and whoever it is are going to be out. And Ross, don't you be messing around putting your hands on him because I don't play that. Don't touch him. You, you have got any problem there, Teddy. I won't even tell you to hush. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be, sure we'll be seeing more of Johnny. I hushed you. Hush. Thank you very much. 
Oh, Doc. Go ahead, and get you some more heat. You, you, y'all, you two were digging in a second ago. I'm sure y'all got more to add to that nonsense y'all were spewing. I mean, as a black man, what do you think about? This? Oh my God! <laughs> First off, I actually think I said this last week. I said it on the Patron show when we were talking about Super Brawl. Mark Merrow put his whole foot into this shit, and he. <laughs> He was living it out there. And to me, I know both of y'all aren't fans of it. And y'all like, it's dumb. Bro, I don't he mind was, it, but yeah, but it, it is kind of, I mean, what are you going to say? He was getting heat. Like, I don't, to me, there's a whole lot worse they could have did. And Man, let me tell you something. It's 1991. I don't need a white guy acting black like Little Richard to get heat. We're two years out from the gangsters. That's the kind of heat I want to see. The, but you're talking about two different types of heat at that. With that, you're talking yeah, about the kind two... I like and the kind that's stupid. Okay, yeah, but this yes. is, but this is TBS though. This is some childish crap. I don't. I wouldn't call it childish in 1991. You, 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 you're portraying a black gay man on television. That ain't childish. That's some. Oh, hell no. I don't want my kid. You better not cheer for that. Bleep, bleep. I mean, that's what was set, being Maybe said. Maybe where you grew up, but I grew up in a in a far more uh, open and accepting. Yeah. No, that's not where I grew up. The freaking country bumpkin hillbillies were screaming, get that you know what, get what, that what? out of I, here. I, I can't hear you. Get that what? Get you know what they were calling them? Whoa. Sorry. There were some N words and there were some F words flying mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. at Johnny B. Bad. Okay, and what you're about, talking about well, I want about, the gangsters what, type heat. What about it's two different pirate. things. But pirate, no come one on, said that bro. Seriously, pirate. you can't say nobody has said that in 15 years. But since we're talking about this, yeah, this just angle, like some butthead, right? Is that where is that where that term originally came from? They I'm said not, it. I mean, they used to say it on air. But Somebody probably muncher. called Johnny B. Bad that, yes. Butt muncher. What's wrong with that? Butt mu- I don't know. You're a butt muncher, so I mean. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone this is the Mike point. comes out from around the desk to put on a hold. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, what the hell are you guys talking about here? I mean, I get into a segment. What are we talking about? These where we're fight. talking about J- Johnny B. Bad and Teddy Long, and these, these assholes the are talking Finally about butt point. pirate and ass munching. What, what are we doing why, here? Why are we talking about this? What are we doing? <laughs> Let's move along then. If we didn't lose anyone at that point. Bobby Eaton is taking on Jeff Stone. Um, Bobby Where's just the wanted to... Okay, so this was taped before he won it. Ugh. That's why. But they put it on the graphic that he was the TV yeah, champ. They, they tried to trick the in-house community. They sure did. It. Yep. Uh, they put it on the graphic. Anyway, there was a picture and picture from Arn to no to. I mean, it's no surprise. Arn says he wants to get his title back, and um, you know he's coming back for his strap. Bobby's going to finish off Stone with the Alabama Jam. No surprise. Doc, any thoughts? A clever little start with Bobby messing with the guy. Um, I thought this went on longer than it needed to, but I get why you want to have Bobby out there wrestling for the people. At a long and day. he's the TV champ, so um, got to let him see the TV champ on TV. Yeah, let him wrestle. I mean, we, we stop the murder you know, on TV. We used to see the TV champ all the time. You know, that was Look something we used to see on TV yeah. when there was a champ. So Bobby's about to hit the Alabama Jam, but Doc, uh, I, I'm. You know, we've seen it a million times, but uh, let's 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 watch him drop it, and then we're gonna go to this next segment. There it is, looking great. Uh, Doc, they go to commercial. Too. Mm-hmm. They go to commercial, and they play an ad for the Brews Cruise. Flair, Luger, Sting, all the stars are gonna be on a cruise ship, and they're calling it the Brews Cruise. Did this actually happen? I don't know. And all, all that numbers. Eight hundred three 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 five nine one zero. I missed this. 
I'm so calling it right now. How would you want to be on a boat? In the, you like cruises. Would you like to be on a boat in the middle of the ocean with a bunch of wrestlers in 1999? No. I Hell have no, no desire. No. And let me tell you something. The name of it, Brews Cruise, I, I'm sorry. I know I'm going to make somebody mad when I say this, but I immediately thought when they went to Flair right here, they're going to be bruising something all right. <laughs> Come on. Pam, I apologize Pam's, in advance. Poor Pam's penis pouch. I just, they're going to be... <laughs> I, that, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I'm, I really am sorry I had to say that. But it's called the Bruise Cruise. It's like that's a rib or some shit. Oh, God. They got uh, on Reddit. They got 1991 WCW Bruise Cruise handheld camera footage. And it's and it's Luger with some woman. Of, of course. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. <laughs> and, it's no one. One, and it's filmed... You know, with someone's camcorder. I bet that, yeah. And like I said, why? that's why they were calling it the Bruise Cruise. The Bruise Cruise. Every girl. Oh, come on, Hop. I mean, you're bright. You know, just, just a cruise. I mean, come on, man. What, what is this? I mean, why is he always going to come back to eating ass and bruising some tonsils? I mean, I'm, trying to watch the, I'm trying to watch the uh, Black Adam with the rock, you know, you know, the <laughs> champs come star. <laughs> Every girl got off that boat holding her throat. Jesus. I didn't oh, see that. You? Nothing. Nothing. I just got Steiner lined. Wow. <laughs> okay. Moving right along. Uh, any other thoughts on the Bruise Cruise, fellas? All those... All those chicks are leaving with, with like face paint all between their legs. What happened? Sting. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> the man called Sting happened. Sting gave us a muscle. I mean, ride. now you would go on uh, one of these Jericho cruises or whatever and like. Yeah, God. That's like, that, that, that sounds like something out of hell. <laughs> that sounds like something like on Game of Thrones. Like. When you fucked up and they made you go guard that wall for the rest of your life? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck was that called? The night guard or something? Yeah, yeah. The night. That, the, the, that yeah. sounds like me. What's so bad about hanging out with wrestlers? Imagine. No, 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 no. Imagine being stuck on a cruise boat with wrestling fans. It's wait. Hold on. I need to. Cl- I need. I need. A, I call those people I, our listeners. So I, I think know. you need to clarify that. I need. I need to. I need to help him out. We're not talking about wrestling fans. We're talking about AEW fans. Yes. And I'm not talking about the casual AEW right. fan or the yeah. AEW fan who watches WWE and and all and everything. Because, I mean, like, I, I'm going to tip my hat to that moron Javorski out there, but at least he watches all that bull crap. I'm talking about the hardcore AEW fans uh, that, oh, they think that they, they think in a room to just get drunk. Those people think that they are this generation's version of ECW. No, 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 sir. Oh, God. That's just. Right. You're stuck on a cruise with these neck beard Rick and Morty t shirt wearing motherfuckers <laughs> that probably put this cruise on their credit card. They probably max out the credit card to do this shit. Oh, God. This sounds like fucking hell. That sounds like a prison ship. Yeah, that's what, those rooms are small, but I could stay in there the rest of the time. Oh, I could, bro. I'll just just you bring the liquor to the fucking door. Fuck okay, that. so I guess we can, Mike. I guess we can uh, draw a red line through the BTT cruise idea. And I guarantee you, no one's getting laid on that ship because there's there's gonna be no women. No, not a not a not a vagina in sight. Mm-mm. <sighs> God. Unless the young bucks show up. Come on, you see? You had to go there. <laughs> oh my God, them clowns. Oh, I mean, they would draw the women, right? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't get that one all the way out. Yeah, they would draw them with a crayon. Come on, you see? 
This is why Dude. people don't take us seriously because we don't cover the current product with any sort of integrity. Oh, oh we do. Some of them oh, just yeah. don't like what we say. Oh yeah. Okay, so I think we finally got past the Bruce Cruz and the Jericho Rock and um, Pimple Faces at Sea or whatever he called it. I'm, I don't even remember. Rock and Ranger. Yeah, when you in WCW when you did the Lion Salt. Yeah, remember that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> remember November to remember in 1995. Yeah, and then Shane Douglas did that. Yeah, yeah. Could you saw him a, a, a fun pill pop figure? Yeah. <laughs> I saw a dude talk, talking to Sam Houston when WrestleMania was here. Not the last time, the time before that. <laughs> when, um, what was that, 2016? And he's, he's, this dude, he was special. I don't know how else to say it, okay? I'm not trying well, to be Wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold on. on. Hold Let, me finish, Let me finish the story. Let me finish the story. special or? No, he wasn't. See, this is why, like, he wasn't special as in slow. He just was just a regular beer-bellied little fella, like five foot six with a gut and, you know, a little bit of chin on his, the hair on his chin. And he's telling Sam Houston, who's drunk, how he's training to be a wrestler, but oh, he can't decide if he wants to be a manager or a wrestler. And Sam is looking at him. With this look of, I'm drunk. Is this guy ribbing me, or what's going on here? And so Sam is. <laughs> Go ahead, Harper. So he wasn't like mentally challenged. He was just Harper and I are trying to make sure weirdo. we can make fun of him. No, he was exactly. no. I, I let me say this. I don't, I don't think he was legally special. Or just a fucking weirdo. There yeah, you go. I think so. Like, and Sam, is, <laughs> bro, you've had to have been around Sam Houston to understand what I'm talking about. He's looking at him. Sam Houston is goofy and weird without being drunk. And I swear Sam was drunk looking at this dude like, where's the candid camera? Oh, uh, you're training to be a manager. Uh, what? And this dude is just irking Sam's nerves and Sam's trying to look for every excuse to get away from this guy. And the guy's following him around like a puppy oh dog. My God. <laughs> he, I think at one point he pawned them off on Rod and Rod was like, Oh brother, I gotta go. I gotta go to the shitter. I got, I got the squirts brother. <laughs> Come on. Oh, Jesus. All right. Uh, while we were BS and Nikita beat Rick hard rock. Did you have any thoughts from that, Doc? Uh, Nikita looked like he had a little black eye in this match. Yeah, he may but have got hit somewhere. They, I mean, go back to the Sam Houston thing. I mean, we have guys like that that come in the Wildcat, and we just like, I kind of look at Danny Flamingo, and like, and he just looks at me and is like, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I think really, and we kind of talk him out of it. Why don't you just beat the shit out of him like they used no, to do? No, you got to talk him out of it, dude. Like, uh, yeah, I know exactly what Harper's talking about. Send him back to the bar with a with a visible scar. They Look, had bro. one guy that really was mentally he was like a real life mankind, and, and the first thing he says is, "Yeah, I was uh, released from the military for uh, mental." We're like, "Okay, <laughs> well, uh, if they could uh, medically." Uh, approve you to do this then we'll let you do it okay we never saw him again he was he was out the box he was like a real life cactus jack bro it was crazy i'm not trying to say that harper and i and danny flamingo aren't <laughs> physical specimens but i've seen some dudes walk into wrestling schools and yeah, you bro. lay eyes on them and it's like what do you brother want? You got to use the bathroom? Do you have to pee? <laughs> <sighs> Keeping it moving. All right, let's roll. Um, they they play this segment. I'm not playing the audio from it, but it's uh, Jim Ross and Paul Lee throw us to a video package, which is playing now if you're watching on the video version, of a team called the Desperados. And I'm actually playing it, and they're fading out, and you can't really see what's going on. 
all you see is like a silhouette of three guys on horses riding into town like it's a western and um they're called the desperados i'm not gonna spoil it for you but it's dumb i guess i spoiled it a little and uh stay tuned it is stupid apparently this is what drove stan hansen on out of the territory well and um one of our favorite people is in this garbage hairy fella right yeah a hairy fella somebody we really like who's been on this show i guess well he's getting paid but the point right. is, why couldn't they get some of that Turner Western music to play over it instead of whatever they had going on? I don't know, dude. This was dumb. And it gets, it, the problem is it gets worse. It's going to turn into like a damn near eight-minute skit at one point on one of these shows. So what but, you're saying is, is that we've been having pretty good wrestling the past few months. We need to do something about that. Yeah, we need to do something really stupid, basically. Okay. Diamond Stud is taking on Ricky Nelson in the next match. DDP introduces a Diamond Stud. He continues saying, good God, over a million times over. Between uh, him and Hush Teddy. I, oh, Hush Teddy. <laughs> um, these two need to, they, they, they're going to pair up in a couple of years. Okay. <laughs> if, no, DDP and Johnny B. Bad become like the oh, next yeah. version of the Pistols and Freebirds. I, I actually like that feud. But, um, I did too, actually, to be honest. Yeah, it was, I, I loved it, w- the way they did it. Uh, we'll get there. Okay, DDP says they are continuing to search for a valet for, uh, I guess, he and the stud. Paul Lee is on commentary. And hold on, I got to go back to a timestamp here and play it because he says something that uh, needs to be heard. Here it is. And as you know, we are searching for a valet. For the start of 1991, we are looking at all of you ladies out there. Which one of you ladies think you can handle the hump right here? Maybe that's another casting couch issue you would like to get on. I'm talking about a hump. How about this babe right here? Bring her up with a striped shirt on. That's fake gold. You, baby. Get her right here. The girl in the striped shirt. One who's bouncing around up front. Bring her up here. Let's see what she's got. Is that the best we can do here in North Carolina, the land of Copenhagen dipping, coupon clipping, draft beer drinking, redneck? If she's got what Let's Missy's got, we're going to need some got. penicillin down here. Oh, you keep it clean. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I had that written down too. Hold on. Redneck. If she's got what Let's Missy's got, we're going to need some penicillin down here. Oh, oh you keep it clean. Before she comes out and slaps your face. Shut up when I'm... Bruh. Paul is, he's working stiff. Yeah, yeah, he God is. God damn. He thinks he's in ECW already. <laughs> so. That's my this, only note from the match. <laughs> this broad looks like a great value Stevie Nicks. Yeah, she does, huh? Wow, I Stevie actually know who that is. Who oh, is that? Oh, like Stevie Nicks. Um. Okay. So did standards and practices mom. did standards and practices get rid of our strippers? Because this was much better at, when it was drunk girls falling down. Yeah, maybe that's what happened. I mean, that one girl was wasted on television. I mean, somebody, one of the suits caught that, or her did. Nah, you yeah, know, and game pay you can't. <laughs> Can't can you bring give me, in a, can, can you give me one hour and 28 seconds? Just with one audio. hour and 28 with audio? I yeah. just played that. That's what I played. Okay, keep going. Okay, you want me to play it again? Yeah. Okay. Don't tell me how to do my job, and I won't cut down the Burger King and show you how to get the fries. Come on. <laughs> wow. Hey Doc, man, um, she's just like a soccer mom, just like she's just driving a Chevy Cavalier station wagon, chewing my, on some my boy, juicy fruit. My boyfriend tells me I'd look like Stevie and Nicks if I lost a few pounds. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to leave that lady alone. Hey, she Doc. got in the ring. She gets what she deserves. Yeah. Hey Doc, the the boy started his job today. Oh God. He had his first day. He, he started got a job. 
he yeah. hated it, didn't he? He came home and he's like exhausted. And I'm oh like, yeah, because it's like I never forget the first day I came home from Burger. I had a headache. I was all like, "What is? What just happened to me?" Well, he he's at a fast food establishment. I don't want to say which one, but uh, he's not like, until they become a sponsor. He ought to get us a sponsorship. He's yeah. like, he's like, my feet hurt so bad. Yeah. <clears throat> He ain't used to that. Here's the yeah. thing. Get him, tell him that if he can get a sponsorship from from the place, then he can also be on the BTT sales team. No, it's okay. He still he still mixes his music and all that? Yeah. He was complaining because um, he had to fill out some tax stuff for that, and he's got to uh. pay taxes. <laughs> I was like, bro, you, you might want to pay them taxes, dude, okay? <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, yeah, man. He started and was like, "Man, you don't pay them taxes, he'll get canceled faster than Kanye." Yeah, come on. I don't want look. Don't say that name. I don't want this to get flagged on uh, the tube of the U for anything. Jesus okay. Christ! Yeah, I take. Just, I say I take it back. Yeah, Is that better. Thank you. That's yeah. better. Okay, Sorry, uh, Diamond you Stud. Diamond Stud, <laughs> Diamond Stud wins. Doc, any other thoughts? Man, we need to get Razor into the main event. It looks like a million bucks. Yeah. Here comes the. Don't know uh, what we're waiting on. We could use some good heels. He's just Razor with a different name, man. Pretty much. Look at that. So what you're saying is they had a a main event superstar just sitting there. Yeah. He need he needed to be like developed and like you know given some wins and whatnot, which they're doing here. But uh, yeah, he's a star. Hey man, we we've been saying it for months. They got a lot of talent, and they've added even more. Right. And, well, it's still WCW, I guess. Whatever. All right. Well, we keep going, and the next match is, uh, after commercial, Steve Austin, stunning Steve Austin versus Chuck Coates. There is a picture-in-picture from Austin and Vivacious Veronica. Veronica says they want the TV title. And it's a quick match. Pretty Well, actually, not that quick. But Austin's going to hit Coates with a twisting hot shot, so like the – Hot shot like Eddie Gilbert used to hit, and then he kind of twists with it. And then a uh, kind of spinning lariat. Uh, Doc, let me go to you if you got anything from Austin here who looks good. And, I mean, easy for us to say he looks like a star because we know what. Well, that was my note. And so, look, I, you, anybody can say, oh, you're just saying that because you was stone cold. They're, this guy's a star. He Nobody can predict the phenomenons that come along like Stone Cold. That took on a life of its own. No matter how much Vince tried to kill it. But I want, I really do wish I could not know what I know and judge this. Because this match was a little clunky. Well, let me just, I just want you to watch something. But he's a star. What? Okay, just watch the first few seconds of this part of the video I'm going to play. Watch how he moves around the ring and watch how he goes into the collar and elbow. He looks like he means business. That's what I mean when I say how good he, he is. He has presence. Just just, just watch. This is airtight. And and most people would look at that and they don't even think nothing of it. Just watch. He just goes in, but he's not stiff with it. It's just, I can't explain it other than say it looks real. Like he looks he like has guy, it. All right. He probably had that same attitude with those guys out in the when he on the forklift in the dock. Can you imagine what a prick he probably was back then? Oh God, that must have been hilarious. Ex ex college football player who likes wrestling, drinking beer, and he's the long haired blonde dude that's like out of central casting for some teen movie villain. Wonder wonder why he didn't stay and just graduate from college. He said yeah. he was just like I, I think he said he had like fifteen hours left. He's like, man, I'm just done with this. I, I damn, I can't. Yeah, I think that's what he said. He didn't College have much. Isn't for everyone, Harper. Yeah, but I mean, you're there playing football on a free ride. I, I assume you know. I tell you what, we'll get Lance to DM him and ask him that. Come on, okay. He won't do it. He won't do it. He doesn't. He he's like, I you know, I don't like I don't like to bug those guys. You know, I, I just uh, you know, you know how it is, Mike. Yeah, I don't want to be a mark. You know. <laughs> um, 
Leave Lance alone. Come on. And that's he's he's kind of one of us. He well, is one yeah, of us. No. And it's bad because like Hopper does that joking and I do too. And then people he actually go people no, but then people go at him on social media and because <laughs> people think they're one of us and they think that you've just given them the license to go in on them. That's yeah, nice. Man. And people I told Lance all alone. you people uh, three or four years ago. All you people? Oh, but I don't like listeners. To leave Lance alone. Yeah. I told y'all that. I heard some disgusting things that were launched his way, and there I felt like I some, needed to step in. There exactly. were some 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 ridiculously stupid, disgusting things, and I'm like, come on. And that's why I keep my humor related to Lance to the to um the SMU ponies and world class wrestling. Thank you. Eh, eh, eh. I still got a program that uh, Michael Hayes started yeah. on. Yeah. See, all right, Doc. You did any, it. Other th- any other thoughts on Austin here? Nah, he's a star. Let's get him he and Razor into the. Maybe we should let him go to the competition. Um, <laughs> exactly. That's actually going to happen. All right. Well, if you didn't get enough of the bull drops in last week, we're going to do another segment here. The Bull is going to drop in with Kevin Sullivan and One Man Gang. Oh, Jason God. Hervey introduces Dusty Rhodes. Okay, hold on, uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, he's got a voodoo doll. This is That's what that is? Yes. This, Harper, you don't even know how bad this is. This is so bad. But listen for uh, Sullivan because we get a lady of the third eye. Yeah, so I'm going to go <laughs> forward in a second, but... But uh, you're going to int- be captivated by how ridiculous and stupid this is. Oh, my God, Harper. You're going to be like, what the piss? Fucking Hervey. So, again, Hervey's got a voodoo doll. Dusty says, what'd it do? Hervey says, <laughs> it's voodoo. <sighs> yeah. That, that was the joke between those two. And then now I'm going to go to the audio. Here it is. Sullivan and One Man Gang have walked out. And uh, let's see what they have to say on the bull drop in. Oh, about voodoo. Voodoo. You do. I do what? Voodoo. Ha! We all know about voodoo. <laughs> yes, we do. Okay. <laughs> I know, sis, that voodoo been on my house before. And I, what you got there? What is that? It's a voodoo doll, American dream. <laughs> it looks like an ugly voodoo doll. Tell me a little more about voodoo and let's talk. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Voodoo and we're talking about El Gigante. If anybody should know the power that the one man gang and myself possess, it's you, American Dream. You see, we are a nightmare for El Gigante, not a dream. Just recently, we came back from South America where we scaled the Andes Mountains, came to the Plateau of Fear, and swam to the River of Death, where we met up with the Lady of the Third Eye, who was shackled to the Tree of Woe. And when I released her, he screamed with delight, the one-man gang, because we feasted and rejoiced. And she told us a little secret. <laughs> Is he gonna be all right, brother? We gotta give him some of that MD, huh? He's fine. And what she told us was what Elegante fears the most. And that is the night and darkness and the people that dwell there. So you see, American Dream, we are now building the death wagon. The Banshees will howl and I will drive that wagon because when the one-man gang flies like the raven of death and lands on the Elegante with the 747, I'm gonna drag the carcass, throw it on the wagon, load it up, and take it to the lady of the third eye. And we'll all speak. Who? Whoa, you do voodoo. What is this? What is this? You need to get him out of here. He's a, he must be allergic to that. We need, we need to get him out of here. We need to get him out of here. What are you doing? What is that? 
Are you sticking pins in that voodoo doll? Are you sticking pins in that do in that voodoo doll? Pull that pin out. Here we go. Jason, I don't know if I can have you on here anymore playing with them voodoo dolls, but let me tell you, on the bull drop in next week, I'm going to be talking to the baddest and force of them all, Double A, I'm Anderson, so for Dusty Rose, the American Dream, and my main man, my little dick, Jason, so long and this ain't no bull. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Bro, Sullivan was asking, saying, are you allergic? Are you allergic to the hay? Are you allergic to hay? <laughs> That's what he was saying. I know. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. Kirby needs to go in a painful way. Remember what we said. If you're a celebrity out there, what needs to happen? You need to be going through a table or getting your ass whooped. Machine Gun Kelly style. Uh. Yeah. Go look that up if you don't know what we're talking about. One of the greatest Harper, segments good, on Raw. It? That was horrible. Horrible. That whole thing was stupid. Just terrible. Oh, God. You know how terrible something has to be for Kevin Sullivan to not even make it entertaining? Well, and <sighs> and, and here's the other piece, Patna. And I don't blame Sullivan, by the way. That crowd was laughing at them at the end, not with them. Yeah, because it was dumb. Dumb. Why is Jason Hervey out there? I mean, I know why, but like it made it's stupid. And he's standing behind Dusty with the voodoo doll sticking pins in it, and it it's so dumb. It's ugh. it's pro- I mean, it's as dumb as Norman. And it's actually worse than Norman. That's the sad part. At least Norman was Boogie, a trained professional wrestler. Oh, my God. Hard to argue. Yeah. And this is Dusty Rhodes out there. What's he doing? He knows better than this bull crap. Does he? Or is he doing what he has to do to keep getting paid? Bruh, he knows. Bruh, that dude is like five foot nothing. He Half pint is taller than Jason Hervey, okay? Yeah, yeah, that dude's small, man. He looks like a little blue person. That's nice. A little just what? Say it. Like a Smurf? Well, he's just not blue, but yeah. He's 5'4". That's, uh, that's legit. No, he's not. That's, that's what the internet is. says. Well, you got to believe be what the internet says. Short. Bro, I don't know, Harper. When you look at him, and I know Dusty Rose isn't short, but he's also not a giant. Jason Hervey looks like a 12-year-old next to him. I'm sorry. Hervey, he looks like an 8-year-old. Well, you want to feel bad, though? What? Hervey is 50 years old now. Well, it, he's still a, well, he's a 5-foot-4 50-year-old. And he's not that low. What does it that, feel like? I, I didn't think he was that close to our age. No, nah, I mean, that he still didn't need to be on TV during in this segment specifically is what I'm talking about. This was dumb. Terry. I'm going to keep moving. Terry Taylor is with uh, Alexander York, and uh, Mr. Hughes is out there with him. He's taking on Big Josh. Uh, these guys were given plenty of time for this match, and I thought the fans were into it, unless they're pumping in noise, which I really can't figure out if they're pumping in noise or the fans are into it. Uh, Big Josh was getting on Terry Taylor near the near the finish. Uh, Josh hits the double axe handle. He's going for the big sit-down move that he does. Uh, but Mr. Hughes trips him when Josh is uh, coming off the ropes, and uh, then um, – I think Dustin Rhodes ended up hitting the ring. Uh, I can't remember if they called it a DQ or what. I think it ended up being a DQ, so Big Josh wins. Doc, any other thoughts? I just can't with Big Josh. So I, I really do like Terry Taylor. I think Terry Taylor's done a lot to rehab his life post-Rooster. Mm-hmm. And this is a great gimmick for him, and he's doing well and flipping and flying and being an arrogant asshole. But Big Josh's character, I don't know. Hopper, any other thoughts before I keep going? No. I will say this as we go into the next segment or match. Big Josh, I don't mind because of what we see next. And what we see next 
is a gentleman by the name of Black Blood with Kevin How Sullivan. How is that? Uh, uh, we can't do that. That's racist. I'm just repeating the name on the screen. Black Blood with Kevin Sullivan. Hold on, versus hold on. Harper, do you know who that is? No. It's a big dude. Taking on Tommy Angel. Uh, Black Kane? Blood is... No. Black, this is too early for Kane. Black uh, Blood is supposed to be from France. He and... also stole Night Stalker's weapon. He did. The axe. Uh, they, Sullivan said his face is banned from being shown here because he's got the sins of humanity tattooed on his face. Doc, do you want to let the people know who Black Blood is? Wait, wait, wait. I want to, is that Adam Bomb? Negative, sir. No? Fuck, mm. I, I don't know. I'm going to come in and say Billy Jack Haynes. You would be correct. That's Billy Jack? That's what I believe. He looks kind of... Beefier than normal? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's he's smoother, meaning right. he's got more girth and fat on his frame, even though he's not fat. He's just not... His body fat it is, isn't as low. But uh, that's supposed to be Billy Jack. Now, the reason I said I'm okay with Big Josh is because, like, I kind of complain a little bit. Like, okay, we all knew Big Josh was Matt Bourne because he doesn't have a mask on. And I actually, now that I see what they did here with Black Blood, even though he's not going to be around for too long, it, the mask and stuff is stupid. Just um, package I, him I up. I don't think the mask is stupid. I don't like it. I don't care. I don't think it's terrible. I just yeah, don't know man. why. He, I mean, he was always kind of seen as like a rugged, good-looking dude, I guess. not. I mean, why is he under a hood? That's why they put the mask on him, man. Yeah, see. So so you don't know who the fuck he is. No, no. He's just, good, no, he's too good looking to be a heel. Yeah. Because, nah, like, th- like, I guess, how you going to put him with Sullivan's, you know, second version of his army of darkness if he's a good looking dude, I guess. Now, you got any story, Billy Jack stories from your time in wrestling, Mike? Mm, just the ones everybody's probably heard. I mean, which I wouldn't. He seems like with. a he seems like an interesting character in real life. Uh, uh, yeah. that, that's a way to say it. He I don't want him coming after me. Uh, Bill Clinton. He what? That's what he's. That's what he said. Wait, no, repeat it, because you broke up. He said he was uh, an assassin for Bill Clinton when he was the governor of Arkansas. Mm, mm. Okay. Yeah, take that for what it's worth. Jesus Christ! I used what to you- give the lady of the third eye back rubs. Huh? Right. I just thought we're saying shit. I just wanted to join in. Oh. Maybe he's the guy that attacked Nancy Pelosi's husband. Okay. Now we're going off the rails. Okay. Come the on, politi- stop. The political views of Hard Bunny Harper do not reflect... Well, he didn't give a political side. He just said maybe he's the guy who attacked them. And- this is crazy, though. He hoods this fella up. Yeah, he puts the hood on his. He, he puts the hood. So black blood. What do you think that hood smells like? Stank, balls, and everything. Uh, he takes this black yeah. mask on that he's had in the ring corner, and he puts the black hood on Tommy Angel's face, and then black blood comes off the top rope with a big elbow to the chest, and black blood wins by pin. I mean, I guess it was fine. I don't. This ain't that bad. No, it really isn't. I, I don't think know the why gimmick you're so is down dumb. on it. Yeah, the gimmick's dumb. I think this is better than fucking uh, look like the guy from the fucking paper towel commercial. Yeah, brawny man. I mean, yeah. the, the weapon's <laughs> dumb, but we could get lo- we could lose that in the prop closet. That's yeah. fine. Sure. Okay, fair enough. I used to right. come out with a fucking grizzly bear that fucking pissed on the floor. Well, now you're on to something, man. All right, we keep the show moving, and we go to Lex Luger versus Jack Dillon. There's a picture and picture from Luger talking about he and Muda wrestling at the Clash, and the winner of that match is supposed to get a shot at Flair's world title. Well, there you go. Hey, stay uh, tuned. Luke, stay tuned for that, yeah. I wonder if that's ever going to happen. Anyway, Luger hits a power slam and then the torture rack on this Jack Dillon fella. And, Doc, I got nothing else. What about you? It was short. He was good, but I tell you, he's over still. 
He sure the yeah. hell is. We then go to <laughs> Sting versus Ring Lord number one. And this is a funny looking fella, Ring Lord number one, with all that hair and sunglasses and beard. You can say what you want about Sting, but the crowd is cheering and they're loud for him and they're into this match. Uh, I I mean, they enjoyed it. He hits the splash and then the Scorpion Deathlock and they're cheering loud. Sting's over too. Both of them, him and Luger, man, they, they get a reaction. And uh, that's all I had from that one. Uh, they do a quick promo at the end and Sting screams that he wants Nikita. And yeah, there's no howl at the end. And then Nikita comes out and JR says, we might not have to wait till the clash. And that's how they finish off the show. So you know, Doc, I guess just just so you know, y'all check your phones and Gary text you something. No matter how badass you are at one time in your life and you're a bodybuilder and all that, that's how you end up. Well, I what, haven't what? gotten whatever you sent yet. Should be coming through. Okay. Fair enough. From away. All right. Well, well while we're wa- oh, okay, well, let's see. That's how everybody uh, ends up, right? Oh, Bill. What do you think about seeing uh, Ken, Ken Pantera? <laughs> I saw him on that fucking, uh, <laughs> on the uh, device deal to tell us the territory. He called him Pantera, but go ahead. Continue. <laughs> oh, That's my God. That's my new favorite. <laughs> oh, please continue. Uh, go ahead, Hopper. We want to hear your thoughts. Doc and I yeah, did a Patreon show it. on it, but yeah, what do you have was, on it? I mean, yeah, he's. He's kind of gained some weight. He's almost 80 years old. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah. And I love when he's talking about the whole McDonald's thing. It, like, he's he's got to just be fucking fucking around to say that he didn't do that. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think he's sincere. So, um... Because the it's whole funny. story just sounds so fucking okay. This didn't happen. Like Interesting you say that, because we it's... haven't talked about this. You and I and the three of us, Doc and I have. And uh, here's a spoiler alert: become a patron and you can hear us really break it down. But I basically said, and Doc said he's full of crap. Yeah. But um, and we elaborate on I'm why. I'm watching this shit, and I'm like, bro, this guy should be like fucking Stephen King writing books or something. With, with this kind of shit that he can just make up. That That's a safe assessment. Uh, wouldn't you say, Doc? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, uh, Ken Patera, there's some crackheads on the corner of the Ninth Ward, New Orleans, that I believe more than you. And that's Come my on. last comment on that one. All right. Before we get out of here, uh, we do need to rate it and hand out some Rolexes. Uh, remember, if you want to listen to us cover The Clash or... All the pay-per-views we cover are the 300-plus Patreon episodes. Become a patron, tinyurl.com slash patreonbtt. We don't do ads on this show. You know, we're self-funded. Become a patron, tinyurl.com slash patreonbtt, and help support the show. All right, Doc, what are you going to rate it? Well, it's not a bad show again. It's two hours, so it's too long. But this was a good show. They got it. They they really need to address the bull drop in. Oh God, I'm stuck between two grades, and I think the two hours is going to be the deal breaker. I'm going to give it a B. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm giving it a B too. The uh, two hours did it. Yeah, I guess I'll give it a B. B. For me. Okay. Yeah. All right, so now we got to give out the Rolex, Doc. Who are you giving your Rolex to? God, I hadn't even thought about it. Son of a bitch. Let's, let's go to let's go to old uh, Harper there first. Let me think about this for a I'm second. I'm trying to think. Uh, who would <laughs> maybe the uh, the one man gang for getting through that shit and not driving off a fucking cliff when he mm. left the fucking building? He kind of deserves it for putting up with yeah, that. I got real. somebody else. Not because I'm not because I'm thinking he he was actually really mean saying this, but Paul Lee had some zingers in this episode, and I'm gonna give it to Paul, although I don't approve of his messages here. That's nice. Yeah, he's wrong for what he said about Missy. Yeah, 
Leave my girl alone. Penicillin shot. He basically oh, said she had discharge. Man, that was foul, huh? Not know, as huh? much as the discharge would be, but sure. Come okay. on. All right. Um. So who are you giving yours to, Hopper? I guess gang for fucking right. putting up with uh, with that fucking man child or whatever poking with a with a baby doll and a fucking pen. All right, Doc. Who you got then? <sighs> huh. For the same reasons, but. I'm going with Sullivan because Sullivan had to stand there, there and talk while that shit was going on. Yeah, he. Yeah, but the one man gang had to roll on a on the floor like an asshole. <laughs> That's true, dude. He, I mean, and Sullivan's like, "What are you allergic? I can't do the Boston. Because are the, you allergic because to hay? Because the kid uh, with the Wonder Years is standing behind Dusty Rhodes poking a fucking a two dollar baby doll with a fucking needle." He's he's hip deep in Missy's, so he gets to be out on TV. Yeah. Yeah. So, that old saying, not what you know, uh, not, not, it's not what you know, what? it's who you know. It's, yeah. yeah. All right, so before we get out of here, I want to make mention of Harper's uh, video shout-outs and relationship advice. Uh, if you'd like a video shout-out from him or you want Harper to cut a promo on you or a friend or you want some relationship advice, email Harper at Chris Hopper 16 wildcat with a K at gmail.com and then PayPal him 20 bucks to CC 303-88-CC at yahoo.com at CC 303-88-CC at yahoo.com. When you email him, be very descriptive, explain what you want, explain who he's cutting a promo on or what type of advice you need, all that good stuff. And Hopper will hook you up with a video and get it sent to you. Also, check out our Vantage Point, the Retro Wrestling Podcast with Joe Morata and Michael Quinn, the northern version of BTT. Slightly classier, definitely more professional, but still fun nonetheless. They support us. Please support them. And check out the Bottom Line Cast with Mike Pru and JV. They also do our ECW show on our Patreon feed. All right. Uh, I got nothing else, Doc. Uh, the clock is ticking. The broad is in there texting me about something. Well, I need to ask you something real quick. You, you have now cleared goes? her birthday month. Oh, Jesus Christ. How did it go? Oh, yeah. Did it go okay for you? It's all so goddamn stupid. Well, how'd it go? It? it went. Thank God it's over. Well, I now, hope she felt special at the end of it. Now I got Christmas right around the corner. I hope she felt more special than she normally does in her normally privileged life. Wow. Privileged, huh? Yeah. She's not as privileged as Alfonda, LaFonda, but uh maybe sure. not, but but let's be clear, we're all living the good life here, right? Land of free flowing, drinking water and <laughs> no you know, all the all the amenities here that's baked into this thing, right? Uh you can't tell her that, man. She's You can't uh, tell any of them that, right? Yeah, but <laughs> they got it rough. I just, There's these struggles are real, pal. Yeah. Hard out here. To eat? Uh did we? Yeah, yeah, we went and got something to eat. That was it. That's uh, great. Amongst every other thing that I had to put up with during the month. Every other thing, yeah. I, I need this. I, dude, I can't even remember. I don't even yeah. There was so much. Does stuff. it start off with something like, you know what I was thinking? Of course. It was oh, would always, yeah. always starts off with, you know what I was thinking. Hey, did yeah. you consider? Oh, God. <laughs> no, I sure didn't. The all-out Blitzkrieg on us mentally is heightened exponentially on the birthday month. Which, by the way, again, it's a birth, it's one day, it's not a month. Or it would be called birth month. No, it's called a birthday. Tell them. Oh, my God. They don't get it. Oh, it's just... just... Hey, here's something else. Grow up. This will I mean, get, get you... I think this will get you half hot, Mike. So what's the day's what's today's date? The first, November? Yeah. Guess yeah. what's happening in my house right now? Y'all fucking decorate the Christmas tree. Christmas tree's going up right now. Outside. Oh my Jesus. fucking God. <laughs> On the other side of the walls out there, the Christmas tree's going up. Oh my Whoa. fucking God. Go over there and put your whip your dick out and say, I'm the man of this house. 
<laughs> what is it? What is it, Mike? Whip your dick out and yell personal just, issues drama. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we're told to grow up and why you need to listen all the way to the end. Christmas tree is going up. In Dude, Doc it's Housel almost, it's on almost like Hopper first. It's almost like Hopper heard the end of the patron episode last week we did. Your children were wearing Halloween costumes. 24 hours ago. 24 hours ago, they were dressed up as monsters trick-or-treating. And yeah. next, day, next day, they're putting up the goddamn Christmas tree for baby Jesus. Oh, my fucking God. I'm telling you, Harper, you don't know what it's like to be white in the suburbs with kids. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Hopper said, "Go out there, put your foot down, drop your pants." <laughs> Which is exactly how I finished our last Patreon episode. That's the irony. It's almost like you texted him this. We don't plan oh, this stuff. Oh my god! Oh god! Hopper's that's so how disgusted. Told, that's how I told Mike to greet Sasha on her birthday. Still go out there and whip out his dick and yell personal issues. <laughs> Hopper, what it was was so it was she took off for her birthday so we can go to lunch because we to be honest, to be honest, there's no other time to go eat because you yeah. got the football games on the on the Friday and then this one's got to do this on Saturday, like. There's no other time. Like, you just can't shoehorn it in, man. It's So she takes off work so that she can go, we can go to lunch. And the whole time she's like, oh, I wish we didn't have to rush and blah, blah, blah. And, like, I'm just like, dear God, just get me through this day so I can get to November 1st. Well, yeah. So uh, where'd y'all go? Oh, some sushi restaurant. Oh. Uh. I just was... Just uh, oh, bro, you gonna you want to know the best one? So she, he's got a the the um the 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 little one had something at school Friday night because it was a bye week for uh, football. So they had um midnight madness for the basketball team. They call it midnight madness, but it's not really midnight. If that makes yeah. sense. But they were performing. So she she tells me, ah, you stay home. I'm gonna I'm just gonna bring you know I'll bring her and uh and that's I was like all right cool. So. They, she picks her up from school. They go get something to eat. Then they got to go back to the school to get ready for the, you know, six o'clock thing that they had to do, whatever time it was. <laughs> and then next morning, she's telling me what happened. I was, I was like, I was like, where'd y'all go eat? I forgot where they went. And she, and she was like, can you, do you realize uh, a plate of such and such was $15 at this place? I go, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's like, we spent 50 bucks. I was like, what the hell did y'all spend $50 on? I still don't know what they spent fifty dollars on, to be honest with you. And she says, "On my fucking birthday." <laughs> <laughs> she was mad because she she had to buy dinner on her birthday, and she was just spending, her and the two kids. It was just her and and the, the youngest. Oh, just the two of them was fifty dollars. Yeah, I don't know what they got, bro. I guess they got an appetizer or something. And yeah, that's twenty five bucks each. They probably got a fucking, you know, the fucking appetizer and something else. Yeah, bro. She was comp. The thing that got me, I was like, I was like, um, well, that's kind of how it works when you have children. You don't really get to, you know, just celebrate you anymore. It's you know, you grow up and. Like when they're young, the birthday is about them. You know, you get past that stage, bro. That that don't that don't fly with women. They think that they are supposed to still be children on their birthday. Now, don't get me wrong, bro. Like I don't. I think you should treat yourself as an adult. Go buy something you want. Go do something good for yourself. But I don't need to wait for my birthday to do that shit. I'm a grown adult. I can do that any day of the year that I have the means to do it. Yeah. So I don't get the whole birthday thing. Bro, she was mad. She's like, I had to spend $50 and she didn't even like what we got. Uh, okay, that sounds like every time. That sounds like you're experiencing being a husband. 
bruh. You're spending Don't. a lot of money and nobody's and everybody's still complaining. And on that note, before we aren't taking care of women because we're divorced, maybe Harper should hit the tagline and get us on out of here. Fuck it, bitch. Merry Christmas.